So it's not possible to make calls to the Shopify API from the front end of your app, but you will have to make those calls from the back end of your app. And since we're working with a Laravel application, that is no problem. All we have to do is create a new controller which will handle the request for us. And I'm going to use the PHP artisan command to make a new controller. And I'm going to call it Shopify collection controller. There we go. And we have now added a new controller. And within that controller, I am going to add a new method and I'm going to call it get Shopify collections. I'm going to set a variable called collection. And in order to send the, the an authenticated request, I will have to type in off user use the method API. In this case, we want to send a rest call with the get method. And we're going to send that request to admin API 2022 04. And we want to get those custom collections. And if you're not sure where to get that URL from, that's very, very easy. All you have to do is go to Google and type in Shopify, for example, collections API. In my case, I need the custom collections API. Then I would go in here and here you can see a very well written documentation on how the collections work, how custom collections work and so on and so on. What kind of methods the API actually offers. And in my case, I need the get method to the custom collections dot JSON. So that's the URL that I will need. And that's also the URL that you can see right here, right? So what is also being returned is the body and within that body I will get a property called custom collections so and I will assign that to that collection and I will now return that collection and also I had to import auth okay now let me save that controller what is left now is I will have to switch to my API file and add that route to my API. So I will now say route get those are the routes from my uh, from my app that I'm working on right now. And now I will just say custom collections just make it very easy Add that controller that I have just added Shopify collection controller. And I want to get that method that I have in here like this. And now I have added that route to my API file. And before I forget it, one thing that is very, very important. If you use either this API route file or your web.php file, you will have to add this middleware right here and add this middleware verify.shopify because without this middleware, you will not be able to use this auth method right here. So this auth user can only work if you use if you set this middleware right here, right? Other than that, your request will not work. So make sure to set that. Okay, so now that we have added that we can modify our Axios call because now we're not going to make that call from the front end directly to the Shopify API. But we're going to make this call to our own API of our backend. And because I'm using this API file right here, the route will be called API. And I have also added this prefix right here. A Laravel lets you add it at a prefix to your API routes. So that's why my API route will look like this API slash V1. And I would also recommend you use a version API, by the way. Anyways, this will be the route name. Now I have forgot it. 
custom collection. Let me add it also. Okay, so now that I have refactored that code, let me switch back to my app and refresh the page. And as you can see now, as a result, I will get that data and that data has an array with both of my collections right here. So everything that is left now is assign those values from the response here to my resource item right here. And I will do that by refactoring the code very quickly and I will show you how I do that. So first of all, I'm going to take out this array from the items and I will say items assign it to items. There we go. And next I want to save the results from my API call to a variable and I will use the context API to do that. So I will say const resource item set resource item equals use state and it will have a default as an array next instead of console logging i will use this set resource item method say e dot data now that data will be stored in inside of that resource item so now all that is left is I will have to assign those properties from the resource item to uh, this items array right here. And I'm going to do that by first of all deleting that array right here. We're not going to need that anymore. And we're going to say resource item map over that resource item. And I'm going to say E will be of type any. And now I'm going to return an object and I will need the following properties. First of all, I'm going to need an ID. I will need a URL. Just for the sake of this tutorial, this will be an empty string. The name will be e.title and the location will also be empty just for now. All right now I'm going to save it, switch back to my application and refresh. And as you can see now, those are my two collections. Ones are my jerseys and the other ones are my shoes. Uh, this is just shoes in German, right? So what I've done now is I've successfully made an API request from the backend from my controller and I'm now showing those properties on the front end. And in my next video, I will show you how to do the same thing with the GraphQL API. And we're also going to take a look at the GraphQL Explorer, which is provided by Shopify. So if you don't wanna miss that, then click the like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.